So it turns out, just like brewers, yeasts are chunky, stressed out, and never get laid. Today we'll be going over five interesting facts about everyone's favorite fungi. Hello beer nerds, this is Beer by the Numbers. Today we're looking at one of the four main ingredients in beer, yeast. Yeast is probably the most important part of your beer, as, after all, these fungi are what turns wort into delicious beer. Let's get started. First things first, you may have noticed that I said yeast was the most important ingredient in beer, and there's a very good reason for that. Besides being the key ingredient that actually ferments wort into beer, yeast are responsible for almost every flavor you experience in beer. Although many brewers and beer geeks alike may go on for hours and hours about how awesome citra hop aromas are, yeast actually play the most important role when it comes to flavor and aroma. Different strains of yeast absorb different amounts of every flavor and aroma producing compound in a wort. This means that the yeast decides not only what flavor compounds to produce, but also which ones they leave alone. Yeast can absorb and transform the alpha acids produced by hops, so yeast can greatly affect how bitter or aromatic the final beer is. And of course, yeast greatly affects the flavors of the malt. After all, yeast are eating all the sugars from the malt in order to produce alcohol and other flavor compounds. So how yeast interacts with a beer's malt base is probably the most important way yeast can affect a beer's flavor. But long before the discovery of yeast, much less its domestication for beer, the ancient Romans discovered uses for dried yeast. Yeast grows and lives in water, however it can be stored for long periods of time if dried once grown. The Romans used to take concentrated dough full of yeast and leave them in the sun. This dried the yeast so that they could be revived with sugars later. Today, most of the yeast for bread and the wine industry is in dried form, but brewers remain strong proponents of liquid yeast. Why is that? Well, for one thing, the sugars that are used to revive dried yeast are glucose instead of the abundant maltose found in malt sugars. This means that yeast that's never been exposed to maltose won't begin the fermentation process quite as fast as liquid yeast. In addition, the yeast drying process isn't quite sterile, increasing the infection chances during fermentation, which means bad beer. So brewers prefer liquid yeast, but as brewers begun to domesticate their liquid yeast, there was one property of certain yeasts that made selective breeding possible. Flocculation. Flocculation is the special ability of brewing yeast that allow them to clump together after fermentation is complete and either rise to the top of the beer or settle on the bottom of the fermenter. Most species of wild yeast are not flocculent and would make consistent flavors across batches of beer almost impossible. However, brewers are a smart bunch and over the centuries they found it was much easier to just grab some sediment off the bottom of a fermenting vessel and throw it in the next batch than it was to try to recreate the same yeast conditions. This led to the property of flocculation being naturally selected into brewing yeast. And this property is really important because it allows brewers to not only reuse yeast but also allowed them to experiment with the natural selection to bring out other yeast traits. Without flocculation, natural selection for other properties would have been much, much harder, as the yeast would have remained in solution in the beer, and thirsty people would have drank away all your hard work. Speaking of natural selection, most types of brewing yeast have lost their ability to reproduce sexually. Although wort is a great place full of food and lacking of competitive bacteria, and predators, yeast unfortunately don't get together to make more little yeasties together. Instead, they were naturally selected to reproduce asexually, which just involves eating about two-thirds of your body weight in food in a short period of time and then expelling a small carbon copy of yourself. While yeast may never know the joys of love, they do a great job of copying themselves over and over, which allows brewers to make more consistent tasting beer between batches. Finally, did you know that unfiltered or unpasteurized beer can be a good source of probiotic yeast? 
your gut is filled with a variety of bacteria and yes, even yeast that help you digest food. Some unfiltered beers can contain yeast that thrive inside the body and do a great job of breaking down certain chemical compounds in food that could otherwise be harmful or unpleasant to your body. This is especially true of unfiltered sour beers, which contain some of similar yeast to those in yogurt. So there you have it, some interesting facts about my favorite microorganism in the whole wide world. If you enjoyed this episode as much as yeast enjoy wort, give it a thumbs up below. And if you want to be alerted each time we tap a fresh episode of Beer by the Numbers, hit that subscribe button. Also, if you like the new look, let me know in the comments below. And if you have any ideas for future videos you want me to research, let me know in the comments as well. Stay curious, beer nerds, and as Leaf Anger once said, hope is like yeast, you know, rising under warmth.